Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. Uh, very excited to be with you again. My name is Mark Akhtemichuk, Performance Engineer uh, with uh, Broadcom uh, VMware VCF Division. With me today, I have another one of my performance peers, Uday. Uday, why don't you give yourself a quick introduction? Hi, uh, my name is Uday Kurkuray, and uh, I have been working on uh, AI, ML, and virtualizing accelerators for almost last 10 years at VMware. Well, great. Well, it's certainly a very popular space, right? Everybody's talking about the accelerators and GPUs and MLAI, so you're in the hot spot of everything. Uh, what do you have to show for us today? We are going to discuss the magic of virtualized H100, L40S, and A100 NVIDIA GPUs in VMware Cloud Foundation. Well, that's awesome. Let's take a look. The work being discussed is done by Uday Kurkure, that's me, Lan Wu, and Hari Sivram. VMware Cloud Foundation is the Goldilocks zone for AIML. It offers near bare metal performance for both training and inference on industry standard benchmarks like ML Commons. Virtualized configurations use fraction of the bare metal resources so that you can consolidate more VMs or other workloads on the same host, thus lowering your total cost of ownership. Fractional vGPUs with isolation are available only in the virtualized environments. VMware Cloud Foundation combines the power of NVIDIA vGPUs and NVIDIA AI Enterprise software with the data center management benefits of VMware Cloud Foundation. VMware Cloud Foundation is the Goldilocks zone for AI ML workloads. I think that's pretty powerful. Well, give us a little bit of background here today. Sure. Uh, we are going to focus on three NVIDIA GPUs. NVIDIA L40S. It is named after Ada Lovelace. Ada Lovelace was the world's first computer programmer who programmed Charles Babbage's difference engine. NVIDIA H100 is named after Grace Hopper. Grace Hopper is an American computer scientist who invented COBOL. NVIDIA A100 is named after Ampere, and Ampere is a French scientist who is considered a founder of classical electromagnetism. Both H100 and A100 are meant for doing machine learning. L40S, it can do graphics as well as machine learning, but we are going to focus only on machine learning performance in this presentation. Let's look at the Hopper's uh, features. It is world's most advanced chip with 80 billion transistors. It has a tra transformer engine in hardware. It improves the transformer performance 6x, and transformer is used in many large language models like chat GPT. GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer, and that's where this engine is useful. Hopper has second generation multi instance GPUs, also known as MIX, where you slice the GPU into seven segments, and each of those segments are completely isolated and they run in parallel without any interference from each other. Hopper is the world's first accelerator with confidential computing, and confidential computing is used in federated learning and where data privacy is very important. Hopper also features Fourth generation NVLink. Fourth generation NVLink offers 7x the bandwidth of PCIe generation 5. In addition, dynamic programming instructions called DPX instructions, it improves the performance of dynamic programs by 7x. Now let's look at the performance of virtualized Hopper chip in the VMware Cloud Foundation. We are going to use MLPuff Inference 4.0 benchmark to compare the performance of bare metal versus the virtual. The configurations for bare metal and virtual are similar. On the bare metal side, we use all 22 logic, 228 logical cores. On the virtual side, we only use 32 vCPUs or 32 logical cores for inferencing. Remaining 196 VMs are available for other VMs or other workloads. The GPU is H100 with 80 GB of high bandwidth memory, and we have eight GPUs fully connected by NVLink. Even on the 
virtual side, we have eight GPUs, eight H100 GPUs, fully connected by H100, and we use virtualized GPUs in this case. Eight GPU has almost become a default unit of uh, deployment in the uh, machine learning world. On the bare metal side, we use one terabyte of memory. On the virtual side, the VM that is doing uh, inferencing has only 128 GB of memory. It is only almost 13% of the available memory on the host. The VM is using only a fraction of the bare metal resources. We are using MLPuffs Inference 4.0 we are looking at a server scenario, and there are two scenarios for inferencing. One is a server scenario, and another is an offline scenario. In offline scenario, all the queries, like all the photos or images, are given to the host. In the server scenario, it's a true server, so the queries come one at a time according to a Poisson distribution. The y-axis here is the normalized throughput. Higher is better, and x-axis is different benchmarks. Retina.net is an object detection program. BERT9 is a natural language uh, processing program. GPT is generative pre-trained transformer with 6 billion parameters. And stable diffusion is text to images benchmark. It has about 2.6 billion parameters. The virtual environment is giving 95 to 104% of the bare metal performance. The power of virtualization delivers near bare metal performance using only a fraction of the resources. Let's look at the offline scenario. X-axis is same as before, except there is a new uh, addition, 3D unit. And 3D unit is a medical imaging program. The virtual environment offers 99% to 104% of the bare metal performance. The power of virtualization delivers near bare metal performance using only a fraction of the resources. I think that's pretty cool to kind of point out because I think a lot of folks still think that with virtualization, there's too much overhead, right? Doing workloads like this within VCF, you're not going to get the same kind of throughputs and results. But, you know, these data points right here show exactly that, that it's okay to virtualize those. Uh, bare metal performance is a, an amazing measure, amazing, amazing benchmark to hit. And you get all the virtualization benefits as well. And in some cases, you do get bare, better than bare metal performance, like the standard diffusion uh, text to images benchmark. Now that we have looked at H100 performance, let's look at virtualized NVIDIA L40S performance. Again, we'll compare uh, virtual performance with the bare metal. Configurations are is as follows. Uh, Dell PowerEdge R760, our virtual configuration is also similar. On the virtual side, the VM that is doing inferencing is only using 13% of the cores. Only 32 cores are allocated, allocated to the VM. Remaining 208 cores are available for other VMs or other workloads. The GPU in this case, for the bare metal side, L40S, we have two instances of it, and it has 48 GB of graphics memory called GDDR6. On the bare metal side, we use the virtualized version of it, uh, known as NVIDIA Grid L40S underscore 48C. That means that we are using all the memory, graphics memory that's there on the GPU. On the bare metal side, we have 1.5 terabytes of memory. On the virtual side, the VM that is doing inferencing is using only 128 GB of memory, only 8.5% of the memory. One key thing that you need to know is in the virtual environment, you need to turn unified virtual memory on. On the bare metal, it is on by default, so there is no, there, there is no need to uh, do any settings there. We are going to look at the offline scenario. Y-axis is a normalized performance. Uh, measured in terms of throughput queries per second, higher is better. X-axis is again retina net, that's the object detection. 3D unit is the medical imaging, RNNT is speech to text, and BERT is the natural language processing. Again, we see virtual performance to be from 92% to 98% of the bare metal. The power of virtualization delivers near bare metal performance using only a fraction of the resources. Let's look at NVIDIA Ampere A100 performance in VMware 
Cloud Foundation. And here we are going to look at training benchmarks. Again, we, we have the similar configurations for bare metal as well as the virtual. On the bare metal side, we use 128 cores with hyperthreading and one terabyte of memory. The training VM is using only 88 vCPU. That's only 70% of CPU resources and 900 gigabytes of memory. The GPU on the both the cases is a 100 with 80 GB of uh, high bandwidth memory fully connected by NVLinks in both the cases. Note that VM is using only the fraction of the bare metal resources. Now let's look at the performance. I mentioned before that we are going to look at the training. So y-axis here is a normalized training time with respect to the bare metal. Lower is better. It's the latency of the training, right? As opposed to the inferencing. Inferencing our metric was the throughput queries per second. So the higher was better. But in this case, the lower is better. The y-axis is BERT, which is a natural language processing benchmark. RNNT is a speech to text. The overhead due to virtualization is from 6% to 8%. The power of virtualization delivers near bare metal performance using only a fraction of the resources. This is the motif of this talk that uh, uh, virtualization uses lower resources and gives you near bare metal performance, thus lowering your total cost of ownership. VMware Cloud Foundation is the Goldilocks zone for AI ML workloads. It offers near bare metal performance for both training and inference on industry standard ML commons benchmark. Virtualized configurations use fraction of the bare metal resources. So remaining resources can be given to other VMs or workloads, thus lowering the total cost of ownership. It allows consolidation of multiple VMs or other workloads on the same host on the same accelerator without sacrificing any performance. Fractional vGPUs with isolation are available only in the virtualized environment. And this is very important in the cloud environment where multi-tenancy is very important. vCloud Foundation combines the power of management, the power of NVIDIA vGPUs and NVIDIA AI enterprise software with the data center management benefits of VMware Cloud Foundation. VMware Cloud Foundation is the Goldilocks zone for AI ML workloads. Well, thank you, Uday. <clears throat> it's really good to see, again, we can always tell a positive story, but as we all know, performance data uh, is the most important aspect to show here. And I, I certainly, I think as we're looking at our customers running their own private clouds, using all of this capacity, we need to be highly efficient. Uh, they want to get value out of the, the capital infrastructure they've invested in. And this, I think, completely shows that not only can they run these workloads successfully at near bare metal, but there's a lot of leftover capacity that they can use in other aspects of their lines of business. And so uh, such a powerful story to get all of the value of virtualization for this very hot topic, very hot spot right now. Yeah. Thank you, Monk. Well, thanks, everybody. Stay tuned for a new episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs coming soon.